Devil May Cry is one of the most legendary gaming series of all time. Lately I tried to play Devil May Cry 5 and after 10 hours of gameplay I decided that it's perfect time to review it. So sit back comfortably and let's go. I think I can speak for most of us when I say that 2013's Ninja Theory Devil May Cry didn't really meet the expectations set by the rest of the games that came before it. And since the game was presented as a reboot and didn't tee into the rest of the established established mythos, it's become a bit of an unspoken rule to pretend it never happened. How refreshing it was then to see Devil May Cry 5 do a complete 180 and made an incredible return to form. Capcom have had a wonderful year, what with outstanding titles like Monster Hunter World and the Resident Evil 2 remake, and the release of Devil May Cry 5 has only compounded this idea. If for whatever reason you didn't already know, Devil May Cry is an over-the-top incredibly stylish action game series in which you mostly play as a badass half-demon half-human hybrid demon hunter who utilizes wide variety of weapons, supernatural powers and snark equips to effortlessly dispose of thousands of terrifying hellspawn. Essentially, if you've played Bayonetta, you should fully understand how this game presents itself, which makes sense since they are both creations of former Capcom employer and founder of Platinum Games Hideki Kamiya. This of course is to say that style is far more important to those that develop these games than substance. The stories are often considered weak and flimsy and characters and their motivations can be seen as flat or one-dimensional. However, if you're of the opinion that this criticism make for a bad experience, then you really don't understand the point of this creation. And while Kamiya hasn't been involved with the development of a Devil May Cry game for many years, his legacy lives on in every fiber of this franchise. While the story isn't the real reason you're here, this is still one to talk about, and I would hardly call it flimsy or anything. It just knows not to take itself too seriously. Set after both Devil May Cry 4 and the anime, the story revolves around Redgrave City, once again being invaded by demons. The Kiliho tree, a colossal plant native to the underground, grows up from the center of the city and the demons spend their time murdering innocents and extracting their blood, leaving only hollow shells of whatever they once were. And this is about as dark and grim of a plot point you can expect here. Dante is hired by newcomer and one of three playable characters we to defeat Urusen, the so-called demon king leading the invasion. Unbeknownst to Dante, we also invite Snero, the punk kid demon hunter from Devil May Cry 4, who lost his killer demon right arm to a strange hooded figure before the game begins, and is now looking for a little payback. Long story short, Dante, Trish, Lady and Nero all get their asses handed to them by Urizen, who is absorbing power from the Kulphot and seems nif on unstoppable for the majority of the game. It takes Dante unlocking his true ultra-mega powerful super Siega Devil Trigger mode to defeat the Usurper. In a twist that shocked all three people that have never heard of these characters, Urizen turned out to be Dante's brother Virgil, who discarded his humanity in an attempt to become more powerful than his twin brother and finally defeat him. This humanity manifested as Weed, who swoops in before Dante can finish Urizen for good and fuses back with him, once again forming Virgil. Oh, and Virgil is Nero's dad, but a lot of people already suspected that. The final battle has Dante and Virgil on the brink of killing one another before Nero steps in, awakening his own devil trigger power and stopping the fight without any casualties. The two brothers then agree to leave this rematch for another time, while they'll deal with the demon invasion, venturing on their own into the underworld to cut the Quilfot off at the root and seal the connection between both worlds, leaving Nero to look after the human world until they inevitably return. Gameplay is split up into three unique styles spread 
across each chapter of Nero, Rui and Dante. Nero replaces his missing right arm with different assorted bionic arms, Metal Gear Solid 5 style, built by Nico, another new side chapter who acts as Nero's mechanic and companion. Some arms discharge large amounts of electricity to attack, some can fire a self-guided rocket punch and some can even slow down time for a few crucial seconds. Nero's sword also so for some reason has an engine installed in it, and Raven the Hilt activates the exit system, drastically powering up his next few swings. Raven the Sword the instant you hit an enemy maxed out the exit gag instantly, making Nero's combat revolve around strict timing and long brutal aerial combos. We is a far cry from the other two, as he doesn't actually fight himself, he commands three separate demons demons, all of whom can act independently of we and each other, however these demons cannot actually finish any enemies and we himself is forced to impale them with his only weapon, a sharpened can. Each demon covers its own part of a combat. Griffin is a bird-like demon who specializes in ranged electronic attacks. Shadow primarily takes the form of a punter, but can morph parts of his body into weapons for close combat. And Nightmare is a hulking golem that, while slow, can dish out immense damage over a wide area. Nightmare can also only be summoned when we is in Devil Trigger, and mostly acts of his own accord while the player continues to control Griffin and Shadow, with three, sometimes four different entities to keep track of Wii's combat does not often come naturally, but the fact that they can act independently can set you up for many stylish combos. Finally, there's the legendary demon hunter himself, Dante whose combat revolves around switching between his four unique combat styles as well as his melee and range weapons. Trickster's style is fast and allows Dante to dodge around the arena at high speed to avoid damage. Swordmaster gives him many new powerful tools for close quarters combat. Gunslinger powers up his ranged weapons in various ways. And Royal Guard gives him access to a block and parry system, rewarding high skill and patient play. The ability to swap between these styles and weapons on the fly is the key to Dante's combat, but since each option has a fully fleshed out moveset associated with it, it can be difficult to remember what all your options are and being overwhelming in the beginning is very likely, however this also makes Dante's combat potentially the the deepest, and utilizing all those options to their fullest really makes you feel like the badass demon killer he is. Overall, I really recommend everyone to try at least this game, cause in my opinion it is really underrated. Have a good day everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.